Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Blue Roy Movies. Well, it's been certainly a momentous week here in the UK. Uh, the weather climate, we've had all the seasons in practically a space of an hour. In the political climate, there's certainly been a big change. And in the sporting climate, England can now take penalties, it seems. But despite all this excitement, we've still had time for six films. So let's get into the weekly watches. <laughs> First up for the week and last Sunday, I came across this in a charity shop, the 1963 version of The Day of the Triffids, uh, starring Howard Keel, who I can only remember seeing in a few episodes of Dallas when my mother used to watch that when I was a kid, and Nicole Moray. Now, I've only ever seen the 1980s television adaption of it, which I really enjoyed, so I thought I'd give the film a spin and... For a low budget film, it was okay. A very, very B movie. Uh, apart from Howard Keel, the acting was very hokey. The plants, the triffids themselves, in some of the scenes, you could just see there were blokes dressed up in suits going like this with leaves all on them, swaying in the wind. Yeah, very odd. You know the story on this one is asteroid shower on earth that renders everybody who watches it blind apart from a few people one guy Howard Keel he's been in hospital for an eye operation so he's had his eyes bandaged up and a bit like that uh, zombie film 28 days later when he comes around and takes his bandages off his operation there's only him left and everybody else is blind yeah all right I'd say the series the 80s series is a lot better I haven't seen the recent series. I think there was one not too long ago, so I don't know whether that's any good. But that was a quid that, and apparently this is quite a sort after DVD. CX will give me a five or four it, so I'll never watch it again. So I'll, I'll probably trade it in and get something else to watch. To be honest, yeah, it's okay. Next up, an oldie. This one from nineteen. 16 the silent version of 20,000 leagues under the sea now i'd say you'd have to be a fan of silent cinema which i am to watch this if you're just a casual observer there's far better stuff than this the story was okay i've never seen uh never read jules verne's novel yeah no shame on me but there you go i've always preferred the films but apparently, like this is a mashup between Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea and his other novel, Mysterious Island. But for nineteen sixteen, it's not bad, and Eureka done a fantastic restoration. And some of the scenes of it are incredible, absolutely pristine. Say it's hundred eight years old. Some of them are a bit ropey, but when you're dealing off a negative that age. You do what you do, I suppose. But what I did find really interesting in this, it's the first time underwater scenes had ever been shot. What they did is they used mirrors and that and used, if you like, a reverse periscope where they're going down under the water instead of a periscope coming up from the water. And to think that in 1916, nobody had seen under the sea before. So when people were watching this, it's pretty much their first ever view of what was under the sea. I just found that, as a historical standpoint, quite interesting. There's Captain Nemo, who is Indian in this story, and his daughter. They're both portrayed by white actors, black top. So I know that upsets some people these days. So if that's not your bag, definitely avoid it. But... It doesn't really bother me. It was just what happened in them days. It's just all part of history for me. So, yeah, worth a watch. Uh, there's two other films on this 
set from Eureka. Uh, the Calgary Stampede and What Happened to Joan. This is volume two. I've already seen volume one. There's three good silent films on that. So looking forward to getting in to see what else is on there. Next up. And I've been enjoying my westerns recently. I've been enjoying my John Wayne recently. So I carried on with that vein with Big Jake. And another really, really good John Wayne film. He's really growing on me. The more and more I see of him, his character, I love him. His gruffness, his rough and readiness. Man's man, absolutely fantastic. In this one, he plays uh, Jake McCandles who has been estranged from his family and his wife, played by Maureen O'Hara, for quite some time. And they are got a plantation and they're the rich family in the neighbourhood. And one day they get uh, visited by bandits and John Wayne's grandson, played by Ethan Wayne, his son in actual life gets kidnapped and he's only a small boy and gets taken away and the kidnappers won a million dollars in ransom. Wayne comes back into the family fold, which causes problems in itself because he's been away for so long. And he teams up with his two sons, who's one of his sons also played by his other son, Patrick Wayne, who this was his 10th film with his dad, John, and Robert Mitchum's son, Christopher. And the family dynamics I found really interesting. If you've got a problem with your son, John gives him a clip to you. How times have changed, eh? Maybe not for the better. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, really good Western. Really enjoyed it. It's sort of set in 1900s, 1909, I think. So it's a merger of New America and the Old West. Uh, John is very set in his ways and he's got his horse. Or well, some of the guys are using cars and... His son, who's played by Mitchum, he's got himself a motorbike. In the end, the horses tend to win over the cars. The cars didn't stand up to bullet shots very well. Yeah, really good Western. Really enjoyed it. I'm going to enjoy cracking on with John Wayne Voyage as well. Last few weeks, I've really enjoyed that. Yeah, fantastic stuff. If you've not watched that, if you're like me, you're sleeping on these Westerns, give that one a go. Brilliant stuff. Next up, from the Hammer Studios, Dracula AD 1972. Now, I think I saw all these films when I was a kid, and they've all sort of merged into one. And I tell you what, between me and you, don't tell anyone, they used to terrify me as a kid. I couldn't sleep at night. <laughs> it's looking at them now and seeing that they're actually quite hokey, and that is quite incredible. But this was decent enough. Uh, Dracula gets resurrected after a hundred years since he's last been on the scene by Satanists into 1972 London where he takes up his feud with the Van Helsing family. Uh, Peter Cushing, he plays the grandson of the last Van Helsing that did for Dracula and Stephanie Beecham plays his granddaughter. Yeah, all right, entertaining hour and a half. I do like 60s and 70s London films. I look, harken back to a, when London was a better place, I think, and it looks really good. Yeah, nice slip on that. Good stuff, great transfer. What's not to like? Next up, and another film I've seen as a kid. I thought, well, I've seen bits and pieces on TV when it used to be on, and that's nine to five. <laughs> Now, this stars Jane Fonda, Dolly Parton, who you know sings the song from this, you all know the song, and Lily Tomlin, which I'm not familiar with a lot of her stuff, but she was the standout in this. Uh, they play three office workers whose boss is horrible piece of work, is an egotist, is a sexist, is a misogynist, and is probably one or two other ists, to be honest. Uh, after one thing too many against these girls, they decide to take action, which culminates in, in them kidnapping him, tying him up BDSM style, and yeah, really good fun comedy. One that's not going to test your brain cells, if you want something light to watch, stick it in. Some 
really funny set pieces. Uh, one bit where they think they've accidentally killed the boss and they accidentally steal a different body thinking it's his body from the hospital and a car chase ensues. Yeah, that was, that's probably the standout scene for me. Yeah, good stuff. I uh, don't know whether it's got a Blu-ray. It's one that I would probably look at upgrading because I enjoyed it. If there is a Blu-ray, I think it's something I'll have to look into. Let's have a swig of me coffee, guys. And last up for the week, and probably the standout for the week for me, 1968's If Directed by Lindsay Anderson. I always have to look at that. I can never remember. Starring... Malcolm McDowell in his first role. Now, this is the role that caught uh, Stanley Kubrick's eye. And from this, he landed the role of Alex in Clockwork Orange. And I can see why, because he plays an unhinged character like Alex in the Clockwork Orange. And this is quite wonderful stuff. It's a look at public schools in the day and how rough <laughs> they were the bullying, uh, the fagging that goes on. Fagging, if you don't know, is the act of the big kids will have a little kid and just make them their slaves, and they used to call that fagging. Yeah, really good stuff. I tell you, it, it makes me glad I grew up in a not very wealthy family and didn't have to go through that myself because I'd have hated that. Uh, quite brutal in places. There, a scene where Alex and his not Alex. Uh, I'm thinking of Clockwork Orange again. Malcolm McDowell and his two friends, they get the cane in the gym and they don't hold back with that cane. And totally different today. They'd get sued if anything like that happened today. But I weren't expecting this to be as surreal as it is. I think half the film takes in place in McDowell's head and some very, very odd scenes. Uh, one scene where they've done something to one of the teachers and they're in front of the head, and the head says, you'll have to apologise to the teacher, and he opens this great big drawer, and the teacher's lying in the drawer, really bizarre, but <laughs> it amused me. And it culminates in quite a brutal ending. Again, if you haven't seen this, if really, really worth a watch, really the highlight of the week, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, Lindsay Anderson apparently has done another film with Malcolm McDowell, Oh Lucky Man, which I'll have to try and dig out now but it looks like it's very hard to get hold of but I'm really interested in seeing that so yeah six films six very different films from 1916 up to the late 20th century but very very good stuff cheers guys for watching oh there'll be no weekly watches unfortunately next week uh, family and I are going to go to the coast for a couple of days stop cheering so i'll probably see you in a week for a video i've got i've had some excellent subscriber mail so i'll show that and we'll talk about something you'll be good give me a like if you like what i've done here today maybe think about subscribing if you want to hear more of this twaddle you'll be good and i'll catch you all again goodbye